good morning to everyone. Uh, thanks for having the opportunity to present. And I will take just the, not just the emerging trends in real estate we published end of last year together with the ULI Urban Land Institute, just to give some food for thoughts. And um, yeah, it's based on its interview base, around eight to 900 market participants we interviewed. In Europe, we did the same in North America and, and the same in Asia PAC, and we'll publish the global report at MIPIM. But picking up the key themes we saw in Europe, I think we can we see the most of the trends also in the other regions of the world. So <clears throat> I think one, one key trend, if you look at the types of use, it's the flight into um, affordable housing, um, this, this social choice. Um, we see more and more from risk diversification that more investors, more capital flows into residential and other living um, types types of use. Um, I think we will go in detail uh, during our discussion, but living is a big thing. I think the general trend, which was discussed uh, at the beginning of the pan pandemic, that is urbanization stopped. I think we had a clear message already last year that we don't see that stopped with all the issues we have with growing house housing prices, rent rental increase in the cities. But it's, it's trend is, the trend is still um, there, but coming also with more and more social pressure. Um, also from the assets type side, we see the clear trend that driven by the um, capital inflow that we have to focus more on operational assets like data center, like um, life science assets, um, but also in our top 10 types of assets uh, our real estate investor want, wants to invest is also new energy infrastructure, which not, is not a, like data center, not a clear clear asset type for real estate investors, but it's a growing thing to go to have some cross crossovers into, into infrastructure. That's, that, that's the trend we see. <clears throat> and the last but not least trend is, of course, the, the, uh, the way to net zero, um, driven by, especially in the EU, by the EU taxonomy and by the regulator. But we see, of course, the same trends, not with the same pressure in other regions of the world to focus more and more on, on the climate path, but even on a wider ESG path, um, but where we see the requests and the demands from all, all stakeholders, from the banks, from the insurers, from the, from the investors, to focus on this ESG topic. Um, the next, um, I think the key um, other points we saw in general, the business confidence, was pretty positive in 21 for 22. And we just published our global CEO survey where we discussed um, key trends um, for this year. And it again came out um, that, that the CEO told us we are pretty positive and the real estate is a number three industry. The number one was private equity, the number two was tech. And number three was real estate with the highest confidence for the, for the uh, future outlook. Um, the other topic, of course, which is on the agenda, it's about inflation. I'm, I'm, I studied, um, I'm an economist and I learned that, that um, real assets are a good inflation hedge. But being in the industry now for more than 25 years, I, know, I, I see and I know it's a bit more complex. If you look at interest rates, if you look at what happens if inflation increases directly with rents, interest rates, et cetera. So there, it's a bit more, more complex than just saying, okay, real assets and real estate is a pure inflation patch. Asset availability, of course, a big topic like the year before. I think there's so much capital, the allocation is still growing into real estate. Um, so the uh, availability of assets is it's, it's a big issue. Also creating the, the, uh, the topics I saw focusing more on operational assets just to broaden the range of investment opportunity. I think that's that's a key thing. And capital flows still positive from the from the European outlook. Um, the Asian in investors were a bit reluctant, driven by the travel restriction we had during the pandemic, but we expect them coming back if borders are open, opening up hopefully soon. Um, but I think it's the same trend if you as we discuss a global outlook, I think it's the same trend that global diversification for the large investors that have teams and the um, enough capital. I think it's a clear trend, which is still, which is still there. Um, perhaps coming to, to the next uh, side, uh, one issue I would say, but one thing lending um, is, is still um, 
is still positive, and but we see not barely hip, but other banks are partly reluctant to finance, um, not reluctant, but a bit more focused on financing um, real estate and, and real assets. And we see a significant growth of mezzanine lenders uh, shipping into this gap. We, we saw banking leaving the market partly, especially the higher risk part, and mezzanine lenders are growing, especially continental Europe, where we, in fact, didn't have a mezzanine market three years ago, but it's growing fast and there are so many funds also coming up and popping up um, to, to, to uh, bridge the gap. Rep uh, repositioning or repurposing and sustainability, I think, the two things that are close together, especially now I'm in Germany and I see more and more discussions when developers or asset owners five years ago, they would say, oh, it's an old building, just... <clears throat> let's 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 uh, destroy it and build a new um, asset for now driven by co2 and the discussion about embodied carbon i think there is a clear change to reposition assets especially inner city um, assets into new asset types but also uh, renovating there's a big renovation wave coming um, as we are talking about 90 95 percent of the assets are older assets and only a small piece are brand new and high standard. So that's a big thing we see in the market, of course, also driven by sustainability. Um, and one topic as in the last years, I would say is logistics. Um, again, driven by the pandemic, we see a clear trend, a forced trend into um, e-commerce and that has to be mirrored um, with, the, with, the, with more investment into logistics. Also the change in in supply chain, um, I think it's a big trend for the next five to 10 years where European um, producers try to produce more with, with European um, pre-products and change the change in the, in the supply chain itself will, will also trigger some more logistics investments um, into Europe and also globally. I think these are the key, the key topics and trends we have seen and hopefully uh, we have some some rooms for discussion and enough thoughts. Thank you.